six or seven. Um, it's asking you to figure out the answer to this equation, because I believe it, it is an equation where it says this is equal to this and simplify the equation or simplify this side of the expression. And so if it was the product rule, obviously if it was all multiplication, uh, you would add the exponents, but it's division. So we can't just add the, the exponents. But what we learned in the previous slide was that x divided by x equals one, because anything divided by itself equals one. A million divided by million is one, two divided by two is one, x divided by x is one. Um, x to the 20th power divided by x to the 20th power is one. Anything that is the same in the numerator and then the same in the denominator equals one. So we have this uh, fraction here with expressions. And what do we notice here? We see that we have an x divided by x. Now we know from this previous step that this equals one. And if this equals one, it's multiplication. This is times, times, times one, or times one over one, which one divided by one also equals one. And so essentially, because you're multiplying by one, it doesn't change the value at all. And at the end of the day, we can ignore it. So if we see something on the numerator and something on the denominator that is the same, and again, this only works for multiplication and division. If this was x plus x, you couldn't do this, okay? Because, you know, x plus one or anything plus one or plus, it, it, um, it still changes the value. But because it's multiplication, anything times one or divided by one stays the same. So we can ignore it. And what do we know? We have another one, an x on the top and an x on the bottom. We can cross that out too. And we're left with these three x's. And this equals, of course, x, x times x times x is equivalent to x to the third. So instead of adding the exponents, what do you think we did here when we divide? Can someone in the, in the chat type what we think happened here with the exponents? Yep, they were subtracted. So with a quotient rule, the quotient is the exact opposite of the product. And so if it's the opposite and with the product rule, we add the exponents. Well, the opposite with the quotient rule, we subtract the exponents. So five minus two equals three. And of course, that was our answer. They have the same base, subtract the exponents if you're dividing them. And that is the quick and easy way to find the quotient. I can, I can, Eliza, I'll do that. Um, and then is slide eight this one, Eliza, with the two on top and five on the bottom? I'm, just, I'm screen sharing, I check myself, but it is, okay. All right, so the same thing applies here. We have x squared divided by x to the fifth, but this one's a little bit tricky, right? Because we notice that the denominator is larger than the numerator. And so if we go here and we see, okay, we have an x and an x here, we can cancel those out. We have an x and an x here. We can cancel those out, cancel, cancel. Now we have these three x's left similarly to the last problem, except it's on the denominator. So we have three, x's on the denominator. So what does this equal? This would equal one divided by x to the third. Now, another way to write this, which is exactly equivalent, is x to the negative third. These are the exact same thing. Now, if you this is for future reference. If you ever see a negative exponent, if you have x to the negative third, x to the negative fifth, x to the negative seventh, you can flip it to the denominator and it's positive. The same thing happens if it's negative on the denominator. If you see a negative exponent on the bottom, flip it to the top, it's positive and they're equivalent. So we can see here, we have one divided by x to the third, flip it to the numerator because there's an imaginary one below anything, right? This is the same thing as x to the negative third divided by one. You can literally flip to the top. But for this specific lesson, this would be one divided by x to the third or 
x to the negative third. Those are equivalent. And so just keep that in mind if you ever see, if you're ever dividing or using the quotient rule, dividing exponential values, if the bottom denominator value is larger, it often means that it is going to end up having a negative exponent value. Or you can keep it on the bottom, keep something simple. If, if seeing that negative value makes it more complicated, then don't worry about the negative value for now. Just, keep, just make sure that there's a one here though, because one divided by x to the third is very different from x to the third. And I hope that that helps explain that slide and the quotient rule in general. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Are there any, or I guess before I stop, are there any questions about this, Did this help? Is there any, I can, I can explain any of this if um, something wasn't clear or if you just want me to go over it again. Okay. I'm glad to hear the song. Although it might not be as simple for other people. So I just want to make sure other people have a chance, but I'll go ahead and stop sharing. Um, if anyone wants me to go, go over that again, please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and open up the rest of the slides for the Desmos. I know most of you have at least started that card sort on slide nine, if not finished it already. Um, and it's gonna start getting into some of the other rules beyond the quotient rule. I believe the power rule is on slide 10. Please let me know if you have any questions. And if it helps anyone, I'll go ahead and share my screen so that you can see the card sort to see how well you're doing. Yep, yep, Jaden, yep. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, okay, Diego, okay, so x to the third and x to the negative third are not equivalent. They're not, but one divided by x to the third is equivalent to x to the negative third. It's a, it's a fractional exponent form. I hope that makes sense. Um, here, I'll try to share my screen again for the PowerPoint. So here we see that um, that one divided by x to the third equals x to the negative third, but this does not equal x to the third. The only reason that this equals this is because it's on the bottom, it's on the denominator, because it's one divided by x to the third. That's why this equals x to the negative third. Yeah, do not, I wanna make this clear, this, these are not equal, not equal at all, not even close. x to the negative third and x to the third are not equal. But one divided by x to the third equals x to the negative third. This is equal, these two are not. So I'm gonna make that clear because I know they're very similar. So, uh, so yeah, very common mistake. So I just wanna hammer that one home. Did that help with that, Diego? Or are you still curious why x to the third on the bottom equals x to the negative third or? Okay, cool. And now I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen on slide nine again, so we can all see. And again, if anyone else has any other questions, please let me know. 
because it'd be the same thing as doing a to the fifth divided by a to the fifth or a to the 10th divided by a to the 10th, a squared divided by a squared. You would subtract the exponents, you end up with a to the zero, but we know anything to the zero power equals one. And so this, you would match up zero and one. And then I'll, a lot of these other ones, you're gonna have to kind of cancel out and see what's left. And again, just remember, a squared and one divided by a squared, that is a, yep. These are not equivalent. They are very different numbers. And remember, actually, I told you that because if you, this a one over a squared is equivalent to a to the negative two. This is not a to the negative two, this is a to two. So please do not think that these are equivalent because they are not. And here we see one that the numerator is the exact same thing as the denominator. There's only one thing that this one could be. I don't wanna match them all up and give you all the answers, but I wanna give you some hints if you're still uh, working on slide nine. Okay. Any questions on slide nine? I know there's still a lot of you still working on that one. So before I leave, is there anything you want me to answer or go over while I have it up? Going once, going twice. I cannot give you any more help on this. No, I'm just kidding. Please ask for more help. <laughs> uh, S, you said, Alexander? Was there something you wanted me to show at all? Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share the card sort for people to check and see how they're doing. Um, card, oh, card sort, okay, I got you. Yep, I'm doing that right now. That's how you're all doing so far. And anyone that's passed the card sort, so you're on slide nine or farther, any questions so far on your stuff? If there's any hint I can give you for the power rule, which is slide 10 and, and on, Try to treat, even though it's not a number, like in that first example on slide 10, you have four squared to the fourth power. So write it out as four squared times four squared times four squared times four squared. If you try to, it's not, uh, you're not distributing, you're not doing any of that. It's literally, or sorry, it's to the, yeah, to the fourth, four squared to the fourth, yeah. So it'd be, it'd be four, four squareds being multiplied to each other. So try to remember that when you're working on slide 10 as well as the other power rule questions. And I see there's still a few of you on six, seven, and uh, eight slides. Um, did you have any questions? You need any any assistance at all? If 
you're still on those slides, um, I would say try to move on to the next ones um, unless you need some help and I don't mind helping at all. So please let me know. Okay, so let's make a new slide. Okay, so we have A times A divided by A times A. Now, we know that A times A is the same thing as a squared, right? So you have a squared divided by a squared. Sorry, that thing's in the way, but so a squared divided by a squared. Now, if we use the quotient rule, we know that because they have the same base, all we have to do is subtract the exponents. So we know that this will equal a to the second power minus the second power. And so two minus two equals zero. So we know that this equals a to the zero. Anything to the zero power always equals one, no matter what. Now, one way to like a shortcut when looking at this for the future is that any time, it doesn't no matter what it is, well, it does except for zero, don't, yeah. Unless if there's a zero, then this will, it'll obviously be zero. But any value that's non-zero, if the top is the exact same as the bottom, which in this case it is a times a divided by a times a, it doesn't really matter what the numerator is or the denominator is. It's the exact same. So anything divided by itself is always one every time. But if you want to use the quotient rule to make sure and just be safe, then this is what you would do. You know that a times a equals a squared. So you know that top and the bottom will both have a squared. You can use the quotient rule, two minus two equals zero. So a to the zero, anything to the zero power equals one. I hope that helps for the card sort. Okay, awesome, glad it helps.